This is Chemistry 108 um, at York College. Today is April 23rd, 2015. We are continuing in Chapter 7. This is kind of where we left off last time. Um, the Schrodinger equation, the Schrodinger wave equation, gives you or a series of quantum numbers, right, which describe, so the wave equation, together with these quantum numbers, describes uh, a function, or is a function that describes each unique electron within uh, in an atom or a molecule or whatever. So if you have an atom, right, let's say you have helium, right, helium has two electrons. Those two electrons, one electron will be described by one set of quantum numbers, right, one set of the four quantum numbers. The second electron is going to be described by a different set of four quantum numbers. Right. And the Pauli exclusion principle says that no two electrons in an atom can have the same <coughs> exact four quantum numbers. Right. They're unique. And so we uh, equated that, or we, uh, <coughs> we, we drew the parallel to, if you go and you visit a stadium, right, the stadium is like your atom, and within the atom you have a section, which is E, you have a row, in which case, which is 12, and you have a seat, which is 8. Right? And so each um, quantum number gives a little more specificity to, what, to, to your electron, and specifically to the energy of your electron, or at least that's part of it. Right? Each seat can here only hold one individual at a time, And so let's kind of go back and, and put names to these uh, quantum numbers. So n, you remember n could be, just to review, it could be any whole number, right, starting with 1. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. That was, it's called the principal quantum number, and that defines what we call a shell. Right? Um, and so n equals 1 me will give us the first shell, n equals 2 will give us the second shell, and so on. Once you know n, then you can um, start to think about L. Right? L um, this is called the angular, mo angular momentum quantum number, depends on n. Right? So if L can go from 0 up to n minus 1. Right? So if n is 1, l can go from 0 to 0, right? n minus 1 is 0. That means it can only be 0. If n is 2, l can be 0 or 1, right? And if n is 3, l can be 0, 1, or 2, and so on. And so electrons that have the same value of n and l are going to be in what we call the same subshell. And remember, we put, we put, we associated um, sp particular letters with L, right? <coughs> um, S, P, D, and F. We're going to get to that and review that in the next slide. Once you have N and L, then you can look at M, so M sub L. And so electrons with the same value of N, L, and M sub L are in the same orbital. Right, so the shell could be like, the section in the stadium, the subshell could be the row, and the orbital can be the seat. Now in the stadium, only one person sits in one seat. Right? In the atom, each m sub l can be associated with two, two different m sub s's. Right? It could either be plus one half or minus one half. So in the atom, two electrons can sit on one seat, right? a plus one and a minus one. So if n, l, and m sub l are fixed, then m sub s equals, can, can be either plus 1 half or minus 1 half. And so each orbital can contain up to two electrons. Right. And we have to limit ourselves to two electrons beca because once n, l, and m sub l are fixed, for the Pauli exclusion principle to hold, which says in the last slide that no two electrons can have the same four, a set of four, exact set of four quantum numbers, then m sub s has to be different, right? Either plus or minus. Uh, 
<coughs> so another way of representing this is the wave function has the four quantum numbers, n, l, m sub l, or 1 half, n, l, m sub l, and minus 1 half. Right, and as if, if these n's and l's and m sub l's are all the same, we say they're the same orbitals. Um, let's reason through this a little bit. Um, it's a kind of a lot to digest. Right, so how many 2p orbitals are there in an atom? Right, so let's keep this up and think about 2p orbitals. What's that? Should it be three because it holds like six electrons? This is correct, but it's kind of the other way. It holds six electrons because it's three 2p orbitals. Um, so let's think about two, right? That two refers to n. So for a 2p orbital, n equals two. And if n equals two, what are the possible values of l? So if n equals 2, l could equal 0 or, or 1, right? right? Because l goes from 0 to n minus 1. So it can be 0 or, zero or 1. Zero would be what kind of orbital or what kind of subshell? S, or which subshell? Right, so 0 refers to an S, and a 1 refers to P. <coughs> right? <coughs> um, remember, S orbitals are spherical, right? And P orbitals are dumbbell shaped. OK, so we have our n, we have our l, and we know we're thinking about l equals 1. So if l equals 1, what's the p what are the possible combinations of m sub l? Remember, m sub l can go from negative l to l. So if l is 1, then m sub l can go from negative 1 all the way up to 1. How many are there? There are three. Right there, so there are three orbitals, remember, n, once you get to n, l, and m sub l, you've defined your orbitals. So there's one, two, three orbitals, <coughs> and we can call them px, py, and pz, right, because the three p orbitals go in, or orient themselves along the x, y, z axes. Right, so 2p, this is the same thing, right, l one, so if l equals 1, then m sub l equals negative 1, 0, or positive 1. There's three orbitals. And that's what they look like, right? The x orbital, the px orbital, the py orbital, and the pz orbital, three p orbitals. <coughs> OK, so here's another one. How many electrons can be placed in the 3D subshell? So let's think about this a little bit, right? So now it's not asking about how many orbitals, it's asking about how many um, electrons. And how many are in the 3D subshell? So now we're going to start thinking about 3D. So for 3D, n equals what? n equals 3. That's what the 3 stands for. D, do we remember what D, what the quantum number associated with D is? Oh, D, isn't D 10? 10 electrons? You know, you know too much, right? It, yes, it does. But, but why, right? What quantum number is associated with the D? Right, it's, it's an L, right? And L equals what for D? Two. Two. Yep. So remember, S is one, P is two, and D is three. Uh, no, S is zero, P is one, D is two. So D gives us L equals two. 
And so if L equals 2, m sub L equals, can go from negative L to L. So it's negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, or 2. So that means there's five orbitals, orbitals in the 3D subshell. And so how many electrons is that? That's 10 electrons. Because each, each orbital hat can hold up to two electrons, right? A plus one and a, and a plus one half and a minus one half. Okay, so let's try another one. How many electrons, and the abbreviation we often use for electrons is E minus, right, to show E for electrons and minus for the charge, can be held in in the second shell, n equals 2. So put your heads together gently and give it a try. You know the answer, but reason through it. Right, I mean, you know the answer because probably you had some chemistry before, but reason through it. For n equals 2, right, the question asks how many electrons can be held in the second shell, n equals 2, right? So for n equals 2, we have to think about how many orbitals are in the second subshell, or in the second shell. It, yes and no, right? So n equal 2 can be associated with l equals 0 or L equals 1, right? Both of these are going to be in n equals 2, right? So we have to think about the orbitals that come from here and the orbitals that come from here, right? So L equals 0, that gives us m sub L equals 0, right? Because it's negative L to positive L. And L equals 1 gives us m sub L equals negative 1, 0, and 1. And then this is going to give us plus one half, right, minus one half. And each one of these is going to give us plus one half and minus one half. Right, so the total is going to be, you have one, two, three, four total orbitals. Each orbital can hold two electrons. It's going to be four times two, eight. Which is what he said, except he added some chemistry to it. Right, so, um, so what are the quantum numbers, right? The quantum numbers are going to be 2, 0, 0, 1 half, 2, 0, 0, negative 1 half, 2, 1, negative 1, 1 half, 2, 1, negative 1, negative 1 half, right? 2, 1, 0, 1 half, 2, 1, 0, negative one half, and what else? Two, one, one, one half, and two, one, one, negative one half. Right, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, eight unique sets of quantum numbers. Now if you can understand that, you get it. If you don't, if you can't understand that, understand it. Yes, go ahead. Um, <laughs> You're, you're getting too far ahead of yourself. <coughs> <We're> <coughs> it depends. This is how many are possible, right? So how many are possible is not the same as how many are in a specific element, right? If it had all of these, it would be an element that had all of the ones filled because they those plus all of the twos, right? And you could kind of think about that, but you're, we're getting ahead of ourselves, yeah. Yes, you're getting ahead of yourself too. <laughs> yes. 
Okay. All right, so here's kind of a summary of what we just did. Right, so for n equals 2, l can only be 0. If l is 0, m sub l can only be 0. You have one orbital. And we would call that 1s. Right, that's <coughs> sort of the name of the orbital. For n equals 2, we get these two l's. The two l's have m sub l's. 1 plus 3 is going to give us 4. So we have the 2s and then the 3 2p's. For n equals 3, how many are we going to get? We're going to get l equals 0, l equals 1, l equals 2. l equals 0 goes from 0 to 0, l equals 1 goes from negative 1 to 1, l equals 2 goes from negative 2 to 2. Right, and so the number of orbitals is going to be 1, 3, and 5. And so this is going to be called 3s. These are going to be our 3, 3p's. And these are going to be our 5, 3d's. OK, so let's say after d comes f, we're not talking about your grades. We're talking about orbitals. Um, so how many electrons? can be uh, in a 4f, in the 4f subshell. So put your heads together again and try that one. And then if you're done with that, let's try this. Which of these is impossible? 3s, 2d, OK, so put your heads together. Give this a try. 4f subshell, right? So so in this case, actually, the 4 is not all that interesting. But n equals 4. And for f, l equals. So S, P, D, F, 0, 1, 2, 3, L equals 3. So for L equals 3, what can M sub L equal? It can go minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. How many orbitals is that? 7. Seven. So how many electrons? 7 times 2 equals 14. Right. Last question. Which of these is impossible? One of these can't exist, right? And it is 2D. Why is that? Because this has n equals 2, and D is also n equals 2. Uh, L e is, is, sorry, also 2. L equals 2. But L can only go up to n minus 1, right? So L can only go up to 1. So we can't have that. So this one is impossible. All right, have a good uh, weekend.